You can see from what Professor Schmidt describes that the Tallinn Manual authors recognise that in cyber operations the term violence, as understood for the purposes of Article 49, can include impairment of functionality. While this would seem a natural and perhaps obvious step, it is not without its ambiguity. Listen to what Professor Schmidt says about debate concerning the need for physical replacement of parts for the cyber action to count as an attack under the law and the broader views concerning whether the destruction of data requiring replacement of this data itself constitutes a sufficient enough threshold to constitute an attack for the purposes of the law of armed conflict. This was, there were, because we're lawyers, we had more views than there were people in the room. Okay. We all agreed that the majority not all. The majority agreed that if there's a serious impediment to the functionality of the object, then that was an attack. Within this majority, there were multiple views. Some members said that this would require replacement of physical components of the object. And the classic example would be swapping out the logic board. I'm not sure why this doesn't work. Let me replace the logic board. Others, I'm in this group, said, no, I think it's more than that. If you have to replace the operating system, or indeed, if you have to replace data that the system relies on to perform its intended function, then that's also, uh, that also is sufficient to meet the functionality test. Because to me, uh, frankly, I re again, I really don't care if you drop a bomb on my computer, you hit it with a hammer, you have to replace the logic board, uh, or you have to reload the operating system, or in the case of certain unique computers, like computers that deal with space, they're designed solely for the purpose of dealing with space, and if you don't have particular data in it, it won't work at all. All I know is that I now have a, 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 a useless item. Now, we need to be a little bit careful. We did not go so far, and I was at a recent conference where I tried to make this point, Someone from another country, a non-English speaking country, had a, a, a PowerPoint and it said, render the object dysfunctional, but they spelled dysfunctional, D-Y-S, functional, instead of D-I-S, functional. We're talking about it being dysfunctional, doesn't work. D-Y-S, functional, means it doesn't work well. And we weren't willing to, most of the experts weren't willing to go so far as to say, if you do something to my system and now it works slower, or it doesn't, maybe Word works, but PowerPoint doesn't, or, or I recently had my computer, it kept turning off, then it would turn back on if I waited 30 seconds, I just had to wait. We're not talking about that. That's interference, that's uh, irritation, but that doesn't rise to the level of harm that would qualify a cyber operation as an attack. So we're talking about DIS, DIS functional, not DYS functional. There were some members, a very small minority, that said, no, it's even more than that. If you're interfering with the data resident on the computer, that's enough. You're damaging data. Most of us rejected that because we said, you've thrown out the baby with the bathwater. That's, that's far too far. That will encompass operations that every state in the world would today uh, deem to be logical because when I conduct a psychological operation through cyberspace, I do have to manipulate ones and zeros in order to do that. That's too far. 